Oh, I'm out. It was a video. Hello, what's up? How are you guys doing? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm gonna be doing a new hardest. Uh, this is probably like the most redundant video of all time. I've already done two videos on this level as it was revealed and as it was about to release. And I've already covered a lot of the level. And you guys may be thinking, but Aeon, you said you weren't gonna be doing a new hardest anytime soon because Bloodlust was gonna be like your hardest until the end of the year. And I was like, yep, you're right. I don't want to do a new hardest this year, but as I was doing my video for this level right before the level came out, like a couple days before, I was playing it and I realized, wow, this level is really fun. <laughs> this level is extremely fun. Uh, it, it, shocker, it's Rust by Nageview. I have 23% on it. I've been doing a lot of runs on it. It's a very fun level. Now, even though this is a very redundant video, I've already covered the video or the level in great detail. I do think that now that I have a lot better understanding of the level, I can go into more depth with the gameplay and like kind of explain how everything works and like give my genuine and like more well thought out thoughts and opinions on the gameplay now that I actually understand what the hell is going on because when I played it originally, it was like first practice run kind of stuff. I had no clue what the hell I was doing. Shout out to 12 Kelvin who already beat the level. He says it's a little bit harder than cognition or a little easier than cognition. So around 17 on the demons list and crisis who has 89%. He says it's easier than cognition, harder than the rupture. So around 17 on the demons list. So it's not much harder than bloodlust in that regard, but it's harder nonetheless. It's going to be very exciting. Please don't tell me in the comment section that this is redundant. I know this video is extremely redundant because this is going to be my third rust video, but you <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I know. Anyway, before we start, I actually have a huge announcement to make, something that I'm very excited about, something that I honestly don't really believe is a real thing that I want to show you guys. I'm super excited for it, and this is kind of like an announcement for it as well. So, I have teamed up with Apex Gaming PCs, and I have my own brand of computers. This is really cool. I'm very, very excited for it. So basically, if you guys are playing Geometry Dash, and you've been wanting to change from mobile to PC, this is the way to go if you want your first computer. Basically, what these computers are, they're kind of like tailored towards Jump Dash in a sense, where I focused on the fact that Jump Dash is a game that runs mostly on CPU, so they primarily focus on CPU, as you can see here, 10th generation and 11th generation Intel i7s, which are the best CPUs for Jump to Dash, as well as look at these graphics cards, bro. RTX 3060, RTX 3070. These are good computers and they're not really that expensive for what they're worth. I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to sell you a product for thousands of dollars, but if you do want a computer, these are good to go. They're decently cheap for what they are. And now building computers yourself is extremely expensive because of scalpers. These guys get their products directly from the manufacturer themselves directly from Intel, so they don't have to balance out for scalper prices. So you won't really get much cheaper computers than these. So I really do highly recommend trying and checking them out if you are interested in buying a computer for yourself. And of course, it does help me directly as it's a partner of mine. And this has been in the works for a couple months now. I'm very, very hype about it. It's really cool. Look at how slick the design is. It's a super clean, minimalistic, awesome computer that just has a lot of potential. You can also customize it a little bit. If you don't want the Intel i3, you can go with Intel i5. You can get RGB, you can get better HDD, better SDD, so on and so forth. You can even get RGB RAM if you want to. It's really cool and I'm super hyped for it. Thank you so, so much to Apex for wanting to sponsor me. This is not just a one-time sponsor, by the way. This is like a genuine partnership. So please go check them out. If, if you, even if you can't buy the computer, just go check them out, go check out their website uh, and yeah. Thank you so much for all the support, everyone. And thank you, Apex, for sponsoring me uh, for the coming future. Code Aeon if you want to get 5% off if you do decide to purchase a computer. So yeah, thank you so much. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We're growing fast. We're growing quickly. We're hitting 100,000 this year. Let's go. Anyway, let's hop into Rust. Give it a practice run. And I can try and explain a little bit more in detail about the level. I know you guys have seen a lot of this before. I've already explained here and there. But I want to try and go as deep as I can with this level today. For this beginning, you hit this orb. This, this yellow orb kind of late. You hit this blue orb. So you can hit this corner. And then this yellow orb, you have to hit late so you can bonk on this, this cube. It's kind of insane to explain. you hit the green orb late, but not too late because you can hit it too late and just bonk into the floor and just die. And then you can't hit it too early either, or too early either because then you won't reach the next green orb and so on. And the black orb, you can jump into the spike in the roof. And this beginning is just, everything about this beginning is just absolutely insane. Like there are so many tiny details into what can kill you in this very beginning that you don't really look for with the naked eye. 
I feel like a lot of the reason why this level, a lot of people feel like, oh, Rust doesn't look that hard, is because you can't really see all the like tiny details of what can kill you unless you have like a trained eye for the level. And like this jump as well is like near perfect, super near perfect. Like if you if you take this into like a triple spike jump, right? It's it's kind of like the Tartarus first jump where it's like four spikes in a row. It's like kind of spread out a little bit. It's like a very, very extended triple spike. This orb as well, you have to hit like very perfectly. This first cube is crazy like all i can really say about this first cube is that it's just crazy there are so many tiny details that could go wrong there are so many like incredibly rough timing that you just you spend a lot of time in this first cube to put it that way and there is the first of very many and by many i mean seven double clicks you just plus press your spacebar and your whatever key at the same time if you already use your spacebar as your main you have to press spacebar and up arrow spacebar mouse it really depends but this is first of very many double taps double taps are very commonplace in this level they're kind of hard they're like a weird like muscle memory kind of thing I, I i don't really know how to explain them and here comes the hardest segment or the hardest sequence of clicks 11 to 14% is absolutely stupid, and it's probably one of the hardest parts of any level ever. You have to hit this orb perfectly, so you go between this. You can't jump too late, because you can't do that. You can't jump so you can land in the orb. You have to land behind the orb, and you have to hit a little bit late, so you go between these spikes. Then you have to hit this blue orb kind of late, so you don't jump into the spike, but not late enough so you can jump too far into these, because you have to hit these late and go between two spikes that are absurdly close together. Did you understand that? <laughs> I don't even know if I understood it myself, I'm completely honest with you. Like so, that's what you have to do, but you also have to do it better because as you saw there, I was way far up. This double tap right here is, in my opinion, probably the hardest click in the level so far. And then after you pass that and you get to this dash row, it's not nearly as hard. It's still really hard, you can still very easily mess it up and you can still very easily choke it, but it's not nearly as hard as the rest, if that makes sense. Uh, this black orb as well is very hard because if you just hit it immediately, you will jump into that. So you have to hit it like really late in a way that's like awkwardly difficult. Because as you can clearly tell, it's like a hard click to get down. And then that blue orb as well. Like, just, this is just entire ending. Like the last like 7% of the pre-drop is just crazy. And then we're done with the pre-drop. God, it's so hard. I'm going to be spending literal thousands of attempts from zero, just dying to the first cube over and over again. It's so absurdly difficult. It's not even funny how hard it is. But then once you get to the drop, it's a little bit easier. And by a little bit easier, I mean, it's not impossible. It's still really hard, though. Don't get me wrong. Part is still just insanely hard. One thing I do appreciate about this level a lot, though, is the fact that Basically, the entire level is very well balanced. This level has some of the absolute best balancing in any level ever. Like, sure, the first cube is hard or harder, but this is the kind of level that goes hard, slightly less hard, and then hard again. So the first and last cubes are the two hardest parts, and then the entire drop is just the same difficulty the entire way through. And I have a hard time differentiating between the last and first cube in what is harder. So this, this level is just incredibly well balanced all over, and it's crazy to see how a level this hard with this unique gameplay can still be at this well balanced okay then we get to this cube this cube is absolutely crazy uh not so much the first two clicks but this pink dash rubber that you're seeing right there is the most unholy pink dash robe of any level i've ever tried you have to hit this green orb so crazy late that you go all the way down to this pink orb so you can go down into the middle. I don't think it's humanly possible to go too late on this so you hit this bottom row of spikes, but this top row of spike you will die to like a trillion times. And then we get to the ball part. This ball part is really good. Uh, it's easily one of the most fun levels in the entire uh, parts in the entire level. And honestly, it might be one of my favorite ball parts of all time. This ball part is extremely satisfying and pulling it off makes you feel really cool. And some of the clicks just don't look like they're, they work in all honesty. Like the, the blue orb, like once you get here, this blue orb, this yellow orb and the blue orb right after, they just do not look like they are parts that literally work. They do not make sense whatsoever from like a standpoint of, hey, that's a part that works. And then we get to the wave. This wave part is 
hard. I feel like it's a part that's gonna end up eventually getting very, very consistent, but it's a part that I've struggled with a lot going into this. These initial three clicks are pretty tough, but after that is not too bad. And then we get to the second ship part, which is, in my opinion, the easier ship part. And then we get to probably one of the hardest double clicks. I would say this is probably the second hardest double click. Not because of the double click, it's because of the click before. Click before is really jank. And by jank, I mean it looks impossible because of how late you have to hit it. So it's like one of those clicks that feel like it's never gonna work. You have to hit this blue orb ridiculously late to then double click. And you have to hit them in a way that you don't hit this black orb too early, which just as a series of clicks, is insanely hard like so and then you get to the ufo the ufo is very consistent as a click pattern the ufo is probably like the most consistent part of the entire level it's very hard don't get me wrong that ufo is very very difficult but it's probably the most consistent part of the level because of how consistent the ufo clicks are so i feel like that ufo is just not going to be a part where a lot of people are going to end up dying because once you get there in normal mode you probably have enough practice with the level to where uh, you're just consistent enough. This double click is kind of weird. Uh, I have a little bit of trouble with it. 59 is just a choke point, I suppose. And then we get to the pillars. I find those pillars really, really hard, personally. Those pillars, they're kind of weird because you have to like perfectly hit them in a spe specific way. Uh, I'm gonna try and show you in slow motion what I mean. So if you go here, you have to do that land, hit, land, hit, land, hit, land, hit late, so you can fall down here. These are wild. They are such insanely difficult clicks. It's, it's kind of hard to like put into words how hard they really are. They're some of the wildest uh, click patterns that I've ever seen, but wow, do they work. And wow, are they satisfying. Then we get into the beast that is the final cube. This cube does not get consistent. I'll say that right now, right away. This cube is insanely hard. It does not get consistent. And the reason why it does not get consistent is not because it's just bad. It's because of the fact that there is so much room between each individual click. There's no muscle memory, there's no rhythm, there's nothing you can hang on to for you to actually do it consistently. The reason why this part is hard is because of the amount of room between each click, making it so that every single click is just entirely raw skill based and you just have to be good at the game, good at timings, and call it a day. You see what I mean though? You see what I mean? You can get very far with this every single clip or every single attempt, but just doing it all in one go is insane. Each individual click is not that bad, but wow, this part is insane trying to do it all in just one go. Once you get to here, once you get past 84%, in my opinion, that's when you get to the easier part of this cube because you can ride muscle memory a lot more because there's way less time between each click. It's still very easy to mess up. Don't get me wrong. It's still a very easy part to mess up up until 89%, but it's still, in my opinion, a lot easier, even though I'm very clearly doing a terrible job at it right now. And then we have this little staircase. This staircase is wild. Uh, it just works. I have no clue how. I think the reason why I struggle so much with this is because I genuinely do not understand how the hell it works. Go one, two, one, two, three, and then you just dash orb. Insane. But then once you get here, it's pretty much where it's like, okay, don't mess up. Basically GG. The only thing you can really mess up uh, is the yellow orb, the pink orb, and this jump. Those are like the only things you can like actively mess up in that part. So once you get here, that's like the GG spot more or less unless you're me and you're gonna fail to the double spike i am gonna predict already that i will die to this seg segment past 90 i will die to the 90s simply because i'm just gonna be like oh i'm gonna be thinking oh shit oh shit oh shit i beat the level i beat the level i beat the level and then i'm gonna mess up to something stupid uh that's my prediction right now because don't get me wrong these timings are really hard like as you can see these these jumps right here are very tight but they are definitely jumps that you can mess up as you can clearly tell But yeah, uh, 
What really is there to say? This is just... God, this level is so hard. Um, yeah, no. I'm very, very, very excited to play this. I'm super excited to try and beat this. I think this is going to be an incredibly enjoyable experience overall, and I'm very hyped for me to actually be able to pull through with this. Uh, I didn't expect to do a new hardest already, but here we are doing a new hardest. What can you do? Uh, but yeah, Rust by Nageview. I'm super hyped for it. I'm going to be streaming it live on Twitch every single day that maybe Mondays and Sundays until I beat this. So please come check it out if you have, if you want to. Uh, I start 9 a.m. EST every single Monday every si to every single Friday. So yeah, come hang out, watch, and uh, hype me up until I beat this level because it's a beast. A very big beast. It's gonna be my new hardest. It's probably, I'm not gonna promise anything because now that I'm gonna be doing a new hardest, I probably might end up doing another new hardest by the end of the year. But most likely this will be my next new hardest for the coming future. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that does. You guys know the drill. Thank you, Apex, for being a partner of mine. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys later. Check out Apex Gaming PCs. If you want a PC, code Aeon at checkoff. Ask your parents. It's an awesome birthday present. Your first computer? Hell yeah. I'll see you guys around. Eat your green, stay healthy, stay hydrated, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out, everyone.